goes screen right. Elliott down the right side to the 25, to the 20, to the 10. Elliott to the pylon. Zeke Elliott, touchdown. 38 on the screen. Zeke, where are you? Not an Oxnard, that is for sure. At least not for now. Welcome to Good Morning Football. We are live in New York City, Wednesday, August 7th. My name is Kay Adams, Peter Schrager, Kyle Brent, Sean O'Hara. Hey, baby. What's up, Morning, crew? I clearly haven't had Time's enough coffee fine, today. Put it down. Let's Ooh. go. Woo. Get after it. It's Glasses Wednesday for Adams. We love it. Let's hey. go. Hey. It's also Whiteboard Wednesday today, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Holla at your boy, Trey. Snoopy Bowl tomorrow. Trey, tell me about the Snoopy Bowl. We got an amazing game on the NFL Network. The Giants are unveiling what they've got in store for 2019. The Jets are coming to town, and yet it is their town. It's a tradition like no other. Snoopy Bowl, Giants, Jets, football's here, Kay. Headlines in Dallas, also a tradition like no other. So it's time for the lead block. Like Jim Finn. Jim Finn. Jim Finn. <laughs> Let's Greg, start with the Greg Cowboys. Camilla. Zeke Elliott, Dak, Amari Cooper, they're all awaiting long-term deals. Cowboys executive VP Stephen Jones said he doesn't expect any of them to get a deal done before training camp ends. So let's first take a listen to Stephen Jones. Oh, I think you could easily get out of Oxnard uh, and be back in Dallas before anything gets done. I don't, matter of fact, I don't see any momentum that would I mean, lead me to believe that we're going to get anything done while we're out here. I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask Zeke and his representation. I mean, our goals are to get deals done. Uh, our problem is we've got a distribution dilemma, and, uh, you know, it's our job to manage the cap, and we're trying to divide the pipe. It's a zero-sum game for us in terms of the money. The money's going out the door. It's just <laughs> who gets what. In addition, our very own James Slater did report yesterday during our show that the Cowboys offered Dak, Elliott, and Cooper deals that would put all three of them in the top five highest paid in their respective positions that were generous as being thrown around from the Cowboys brass as well. We'll take a look here at the top five highest paid QBs in the league right now. Now, if he wants to be in this conversation, wants to be paid like them, it's worth a discussion on whether he should Where's be. Where's Brady at? Do we think he would be in this conversation if he didn't have Zeke Elliott? And I'll add this. Is that even a fair question to be asking? Mm. Mm. I, I, when I see the list, I, I would say no. I mean, those guys are fantastic. And here's what you got to do. Let's, let's exercise a little hypothetical, all right? Let's go back to the 2016 NFL draft in Chicago, Illinois. What if Roger Goodell went up there and said, with the number four pick – in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Jalen Ramsey, cornerback, Florida State. And they take Jalen, great player, okay? So Tony Roma gets hurt, Dak Prescott goes in, and he has Alfred Morris, ironically, his running back, his current teammate. He's not having Zeke ripping off 140, 138, 134, 157, week after week after week. I don't know if it's fair or not to Dak, but that's how things worked out. And if Zeke had never been there, I don't think Dak is where he is now, and he's certainly not in the top five. Let me ask you this, though. One of the things we credit Dak for so much is his game-winning drives, which that rookie season when they were a one seed in the NFC, he had five game-winning drives. So he – that's not Zeke doing that. Zeke wasn't putting them in position – to when he had to close out those games. So, like, it, it bothers me from a fairness perspective to sort of put Zeke in there when we're talking about what Dak should be paid. I think in this, in this analogy, Dak is the closer, and he gets huge credit for doing that. The reason they were within one score is because they had an incredible running back who got Fair. them in that position. I don't want to pick on Dak. It's not his fault they got Zeke. Zeke's an incredible player. Dak would not be accomplished what he has without him. It's you know, true. You know what? You know, we're now... I guess 10 years, almost 10 years from the new CBA that was done in 2011. And now I can kind of give a retrospective on it. And I look at that CBA and how it worked out. The big winners, the average to above average quarterback. The average to the above average quarterback is getting generational wealth right now. And that goes from Andy Dalton to whether you want to say Matt Stafford. These guys will, their grandkids, grandkids, grandkids will never have to pay for anything because they're being set up for life. The losers... Sorry, it's the running back, and that's just the market. That's how it was done, and that's how the running backs used to get paid. And, and things haven't changed in football so drastically. that It's because of the way the CBA is, and I'm sorry that's just what it is, and the market continues to change. In fact, you heard Stephen Jones's quote there where he's like, Le'Veon Bell is the new market thing, and Le'Veon Bell was an unfettered free agent. And, you know, back in February, this is what Stephen Jones had to say when talking about Zeke. If you look at this screen right here, it's wild to What's see in just a for? few different months how this can change. Well, I mean, we've got it budgeted that we're going to pay Zeke a significant contract at some point. We saw what Gurley got paid, and that's probably where it starts. 
Mm. And we'll go. That was in February. Guys, guess what? Here we are. Now he's like, well, no, wait a second. Le'Veon Bell was a free agent in March. Right. So and got significantly less. So it readjusts. That's just what it is. It's the market. I'm sorry. In fantasy football and in, and in maybe on paper, it makes sense to pay Zeke the most and to pay Dak the least. That's not how a team is built. And you don't want to publicly battle with the Jones family. You're not going to win that boxing match. Go talk to the NFLPA. Go talk to DeMaurice Smith. Go talk to whoever because the next CBA, maybe you can set it up so running backs can get paid. I don't know how that's going to be done, but maybe that's part of your plan as you continue to negotiate labor. Quarterbacks are kind of like the Toys R Us of the NFL, all right? Toys R Us no longer with us. Jeffrey the Giraffe. RIP. But it's Jeffrey money, right? It's funny money. When you take quarterbacks, it's not – you don't get paid on production. You get paid on timing, and you get paid on how how many more years you have left on your – in your career. When you look at that top five quarterbacks, Tom Brady's nowhere even close to that. He's the best quarterback in the game, has been for the last 20 years, basically. But you look at these numbers, it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. Carson Wentz is on there. He's fourth, right? All right, he hasn't played in a postseason game yet. Yes, his team is gone, but, I mean, for Dak Prescott, he's going to get paid because of the timing of it and because that's what you do. When you have a franchise quarterback, to your point, Kay, yeah. that can win you the game when it's on the line. That's all. That's what you're paying for. Was I'm paying those six games. They were 3-3. Three and three. That's a wash to me. It was the last three games that they won, so they somehow were able to figure it out. I also want to ask you, because I know how much you love Amari Cooper. I do. And they won seven of eight games when Amari was traded there, and he really opened things mm. up. Their beginning half of the season with Zeke did not look that way. Uh-huh. So they started winning and really really making it happen. And he also led another five game-winning drives in those seven of eight last games last year. So to me, it's almost that almost takes the value away from Ezekiel Elliott if we're talking about a group effort. But I don't like that it's totally tied into him because then you can make the same argument with why Julian Edelman is only good because of Brady and Devonta Adams and stuff like that. Like I think the market has to speak, and that's the easiest thing from a business perspective to look at. Yeah. And, and and if he's top five, he's top five. I think we move on, and then in a day or two, Jared Goff gets his money, and then Mahomes gets it next year. You said year. average quarterbacks. Every guy on that list we showed, everyone has been to a Super Bowl, and a bunch of them won MVP. Everyone, and most of them have won it. Dak will. See. We will see. Stephen Jones also spoke about how the contracts of running backs around the league could impact Zeke Elliott's future contract. Peter just talked about Le'Veon Bell. Let's hear from Stephen himself. I think the market reset with Le'Veon. Uh, uh, you know, I think you see what happens with Gurley, uh, how tenuous it is. And then you get a great player like uh, Le'Veon, who's every bit as well thought of as uh, as Gurley, and he had unfettered free agency. He had 32 teams with no draft picks attached, mm. and the market was 13.5 and uh, less than Gurley. So, you know, at the end of the day, business changes, and uh, we certainly pay attention to that as well. Le'Veon sat out a year, so I don't know if it's fair to compare him to Todd Gurley. I think they're very different, but let's take a look here at the list of highest-paid running backs in the league. It's pretty easy to argue that Elliott has proven at having a rushing title twice that he deserves to be on this list and having as many snaps in that offense as he does throughout the year. So the Cup is a Super Bowl aspiration this year. Yep. Like That's where they want to be. And it's not next year, and it's not a future window. It's right now. It's 2019, the 100th year of the NFL. Shrey, is it safe to say that they have no chance of winning a Super Bowl without Zeke? I, I can't say that, but I, I think it puts them seriously behind the eight ball, and yet I don't think they're going to bend. And like we were talking about with the market, it's ever-changing, and it's not going in the right direction. So this is a message to Melvin Gordon, to Ezekiel Elliott, to all the running backs out there. I, until you get a new CBA, it's not going to – look, 2011, which is a good eight seasons ago, Adrian Peterson made $14 million a year, and nobody blinked. This year – Two, co- two running backs are going to make $14 million, and it's almost like it's a, a crazy anomaly they're going to make that much. You're supposed to get more money when the salary cap goes up, not less, but the running mark- back market is going down. Ezekiel Elliott, that's just the economics of it. Mm-hmm. And, Kay, can they win without him? We'll see, because unless he takes less money, I don't think they're going to have an option, and they will have to play without him. If, if they think they can't win without one of their stars, look at their quarterback. I can't say they have no chance from the Super Bowl. In 2016, they lost Tony Romo. They lost his backup. There's no way they could possibly make the playoffs, but look what happened. And I would just say this. We celebrated when the schedule came out, all right? It was the offseason. Here's the schedule. We talked to all the schedule makers and everything. It is fascinating the way this worked out if you look at the way the Cowboys open up. Because let's say Zeke does sit out. Schedule Guys, guy. The schedule is <laughs> those first three weeks. I know things change. I know teams show up differently. But if they were opening week one against Kansas City and then week two against the Bears, 
It looks a lot more intimidating than it does with the Giants team and a Redskins team, both who are heavily in transition, meaning that if Zeke sits out and they win those games, stay in Mexico, Zeke. We're good. If they go 0-2, history repeats itself. The schedule is the Cowboys' friend right now. Mm. I think Zeke Elliott is the identity of this offense. So I, I, can they reach the Super Bowl? I don't think they even make the playoffs without Zeke. I, I think this offensive line is built to run the football. Zeke is a contact runner. I've ca- talked to a couple of defensive coordinators since all this news came out yeah. in the training camp. And I said, who do you need to stop more, Zeke or Dak? Both of them said Zeke. Zeke. Because he's going to touch the ball a lot, you know, more than any other guy on that team. First and second down are nightmares. If you don't stop him, you, you can't get off the field. It's old-fashioned. i tell you who's lobbying for, Kellen Moore, for, for him to come back. is mm. Kellen Moore, sure. the offensive coordinator. It's his first year calling plays. You don't think he wants to be able to just hand the ball off to Zeke on first down? At what cost, Sean? And three? Of course they want Ezekiel Elliott. If their offensive line Right, but we're talking about do your thing. this Your team and this offense without again. Zeke. And, and, and nobody on that team wants to go into the season, let alone November and December, no, when no. you've got to go on the road and try to win football games without Zeke. I mean, they, 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 there's nobody in that locker room. Two years left on his contract. He wants that. $16 million a year. He wants to break the bank. That would go against everything that the Jones family has said publicly, and I don't know if they necessarily want to set that precedent mm. in that locker room. I'm saying his value. I don't know if they necessarily agree with how he's going about it. Because mm-hmm. you could still demand a new contract and be there. You know, look, Dak's, Dak's there. Let's Amari's watch there. these preseason games. Gurley was Maybe there. they got a Philip Lindsay on their team. Maybe, Maybe they, they got do. a running back with fresh legs Maybe and they start going. For. Uh, the roster's loaded top to bottom for sure, and I don't know that we've seen the, what Dak is yet. He's still young. He's just about to, about yep. to turn 26. He's get better in the red zone. About to turn 26. Like Maybe he's getting better. Amari Cooper will be a huge no part doubt. of that. So big expectations. Still Super Bowl expectations, I think, with or without Zeke to start week one. Kyle, thanks for the schedule. Look. Anytime. Good. I'm Schedule Guy, if you need me here. At Schedule Guy. That's Juju. Cowboys. Cowboys Saints, week four. <laughs> Do you want to do a peek into Juju and Michael Irvin talking? Yeah, let's do it. What are they Sure. Well, Mr. 